We are at the tail end of the topic, nature of proof. Uh, I don't know if it feels like we've been in there a long time, or a short time. Uh, today's lesson, you guys know we've introduced a whole bunch of new language and ideas and concepts to you. This one's gonna feel probably the most, inverted commas, it's all maths, but this will feel the most familiar mathematical that you've done since the start of the year, is my expectation. So, we're gonna be talking about inequalities as the heading states, and you have to be quite cautious with these objects, right? Because they seem really familiar, but they're actually I'm going to suggest dangerously different in at least three key ways, all of which we'll need to keep in mind for the proofs we're going to do today. So let's have a think about each one in turn. Number one, uh, we're really good at dealing with equations, like really, really good. If you're here in this room, you're an expert at them. But when it comes to equations versus inequalities, if I handed you an equation with no like verb, no question, no keyword with it, what would you expect is the thing you need to do to that equation to finish the question. What do you think? It's like an, an equation on the board. You're like, oh, what do I do with this thing? What's the operative verb? Solve, solve, find x, right? So I'm trying to find a solution for this and your brain is quite wired to do that in kind of this like, here's the direction that I'm headed in, right? But you cannot really, in the context of this topic, think about solving an inequality. I mean, I can just turn this into an inequality and I can still ask you to solve it, but we're actually going to be dealing with, I mean, what's the topic again? Proof. We're proving inequalities. And as you're going to see, it's quite a different mentality that's involved, okay? There's the first difference. The second difference is, when you get an inequality, right? When you get an inequality, the sides, as the name suggests, they're different. They're different, right? That's what unequal inequality means. Now that has some really weird implications because for instance if I said to you 10 is greater than 7 which is a fairly uncontroversial statement right I can say 10 is greater than 7 that implies that 10 is greater than 6 and you're like well of course numerically that makes sense to us but just think about the difference from this compared to if we were back in equation land, right? You don't just go ahead and say, I actually don't like that half being there. Just gonna change it to something else, right? That doesn't fly when we're dealing with equations, but with inequalities, you can do different things to both sides of the, of the inequality, and sometimes you have to, or there's no other way to go about it. Let me give you, let me give you a more um, concrete example that's more controversial than say this. Can you? Um, Get your pen out, right? Suppose you were being asked to prove. It was some expression with a bunch of x's in it. Maybe it was a, an exponential or a polynomial or a trigonometric function. Something with x's in it, and we are, want you to prove that it's bigger than, well, let's just go with six, right? Now, you may get asked to start manipulating this thing, start working with it, and I have students, when they're attempting this question, right, they go through all their working, and then they get to some line that looks like this. And they're like, oh no, what have I done wrong? Now, of course, you've done nothing wrong. If the thing that you're interested in, you want to make it prove that it's bigger than six, well, you just prove that it's even bigger than bigger than six. So from here, you directly go to this line. But that's just a whole different mindset from how you dealt with inequalities. Does that make sense? Okay, and then thirdly, last caution, Inequalities have direction, don't they, right? Uh, when you think about equations here, right, I can just flip this around, makes no difference, yeah? But of course, our left and our right-hand side here are very, very different. Let me give you some quick examples. Again, using our um, language from earlier in the topic, if A is greater than B, that means I can say, if and only if, when I multiply both sides by a negative, like say negative one, what does that tell you about the direction of the inequality? It's, it's switched, has it not? 10's bigger than six, but negative 10 is less than negative six. Are you happy with that? Okay. Um, there are other situations where you have to mind the direction of the inequality and say, for example, do the same thing to both sides, same thing to both sides, same operation, but you still have to flip the direction of the inequality. Can someone give me an example? Have a think. A is greater than B. I'll give you a clue. Uh, this one's about multiplication, right? The most obvious one you're gonna encounter has to do with the opposite of multiplication, with division, right? 
Division's something that you have to be careful with at these as well because multiplication and division, they're kind of like the same operation looked at from two different points of view. So if, for instance, I took the reciprocal of both sides, right? this is something you can do with equations, happy times, right? One over this should equal two. I'll take the reciprocal of both sides, happy times, but that's not the case here. What was our example? 10 is bigger than six. A tenth is definitely less than a sixth. Make sense? So we have to mind the fact that even when you're doing the same thing to both sides, you actually have to deal with the direction of it. Ciao. Uh, and then here, because we don't know the sign of A and B, so if we take the reciprocal reaction, cannot. Yeah, that's right. It gets even more confusing when you start to think about, well, what values can A and B take on? Mercifully for you guys, we are going to be thinking about positive, negative, but no complex numbers. When you think about inequalities, right, you actually can't say that a complex number is bigger in, you know, is bigger than and nothing else than another complex number. You can say their magnitudes are different, you can say their angles are different, but this is that two-dimensional nature of it, right? Which one is greater? Is this greater or is this greater? Right? So we don't worry about order when we talk about complex numbers. Everything we're about to do under this part will be in the real number world. Make sense? Okay. Under this heading, make a little subheading for me, which is strategies. What are, in my, in view of these cautions, what are the strategies we can use to prove the sets of inequalities that we're going to be provided? I've got three main ones for you. Number one, uh, we were just actually, I was just sort of flagging it, right? Number one has to do with sign, to do with positives or negatives. So say for instance, let's switch over to, where's my black on? Let's say, for example, you wanted to prove that sum A is bigger than sum B. Okay? So if we're required to prove A is greater than B, then A and B could be anything. It could be a whole function, could be a number, etc. One of the ways we can do this is we can think there are some operations that preserve the direction of the inequality. Addition and subtraction are generally okay, yeah? So I could do something like this. These are equivalent statements. I know I started off trying to remind you to question everything you thought you knew, but this is fairly happy to say, I think we all agree on this, right? Now, the reason why this is instrumentally better to think about is because it's easy to say that something is positive rather than make a direct comparison between the size of these two things. Or I guess we could also say, if I had the direction of the inequality facing the other direction, A is less than B, then what I'd want to prove is that A minus B is less than zero. So what are your ways to do that? Um, there's a few different ways. For instance, if you want to prove that something is positive, right? I can say for all values of x that are real, remember I said to you we're not worrying about complex numbers for now, for all values of x that are real, I'm going to have x squared, I can make a statement about its sign, can't I? Right? It's positive or negative enough. Um, if it's real, can this number ever be negative? The answer is no. So we would say this is a non-negative number. It doesn't have to be positive though, because it could of course be equal to zero. zero. So we uh, include the boundary. Does that make sense? So you can say, look, if I can get some square in there, then happy times. I can prove that it's equal to or greater than zero, and then you need to deal with that equal to case, right? What other ways could we do this? Well, if I said to you, here's another strategy. If I said to you, I have two positive numbers, A and B, right? What can you tell me about the product of those two numbers? The product is also positive, right? So these imply that AB is greater than zero. So if the object that you're interested in can be stated as some kind of product, you can factorize it in some nice neat way that I look at each of the independent factors, and they're both positive, then, then I'm done, right? And I'll just come back to this one over here. Sometimes you can get a one over A in your expression. You're like, oh, I got to here. Well, what that implies is something about its reciprocal. What's the re what can you tell me about the sign of the reciprocal of, say, a positive number? If I said this is positive, what can you tell me about its reciprocal? A is positive. Yeah, it changes magnitude, but it will not change sign, right? So this is also going to be a mechanism that we can use to prove that something is positive.